Hey, how are you? My name is Stacy Peterson, and I'm the Executive Director of Fresh Start Recovery Center. It's great to be with you. How do we convey to you 25 years of building, of people, of community in such a short time frame? This is the first time that we've shot a video like this where we have a green screen. And I gotta tell you, it's amazing because I can do whatever I want. I can have ultimate power. It's taken many people over the course of 25 years to help us get to where we are today. And everything that we've done to date, it's all been you. And, uh, uh, and, it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Can I get a little help here, please? Come on, I need some help. Okay, so let me show you. You might not be aware of the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes at Fresh Start. But when we call someone to come in for the bed, we expect them to have five days sober. So it, it's a whole long-term program. You could go to Foothills Hospital if you want, but there's also Brentford, which is a medical okay. detox. Actually, through a phone interview, was my first uh, real contact with Fresh Start. Uh, so when they arrive at the front desk and they say, I got a call to come in for a bed, yay, we get to put a face to the phone calls, which is really nice, you know, so we get to meet them one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, then Nicole takes over as intake coordinator. Okay, perfect. Needles, no nothing like that. We use this more for, no, they were here at this time. We have a great relationship with the community. The guys here have um, helped with the park, the community garden. Why don't we bring your stuff up? Okay. Okay. You'll be assigned a chore that you do daily. This is your half of the room. Okay. So. Jesse. Yes. Welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> you know, just, and I tell the guys often, just because I'm on this side of the desk, I'm not any better than you because you're on that side. Because at one time in my life, I was on that side of the desk. So how did it happen? Well, 25 years, it took a lot of people and a lot of resources. Let's see, that was 19, 92, what was going on in 92? We had, we had Mulrooney, and sadly, I had a lot more hair back then, and, and let's be clear, I prefer to call it a moule. It's not a mullet, okay? Seriously though, who were the founders of Fresh Start Recovery Center? Tom and Carol Berthelot, fantastic people. Tom was a stockbroker, he was in recovery, and he knew that if he got the right people together, they could make a difference. So he gathered a small group of dedicated, committed, and loving individuals, and that is where Fresh Start was born. It was tough times because we weren't getting ongoing uh, per diems from government. All we could build was for a room and board for, through welfare. Um, so but Tom Berthelot, God bless the man, he always found a way to make sure that there was always food on the table for everyone. Never, ever did I ever hear him say, we didn't have any food tonight, or today, or lunch, or breakfast. He was a big man with a big heart, uh, very plain spoken, and always had a great sense of humor. Tom wanted to be on the board to do legal work, because then he figured to be free. <laughs> Which was pretty much right. To see Tom um, bring back the confidence in these young people, you know, they were, they were you know, for a strong word, broken, and, and Tom was able to just kind of put those pieces back together. Some of you don't know, but Fresh Start wasn't always Fresh Start. Originally, it was called CLASP, which was Christian Love and Shelter Program. That changed in 1996 when they wanted to remove the religious connotation, but they wanted to maintain a spiritual program and they changed it to Fresh Start. It just proves that a small group of caring, committed, and loving individuals can create lasting impact and phenomenal change in our community. I can see the positive that Fresh Start does, and I can run into guys on the street or at the Talos Repsol Center and see that the positive is being done in the community. And it does make Calgary better, and lives are being recovered. That's a great thing to know that I'm a small piece of that. The ripple effect is obvious. One of the guys that was instrumental in Fresh Start getting its first facility was a fellow named Father Michael Duggan, an amazing guy. 
This building had been purchased by the diocese, but they didn't know what to do with it. And Tom said, I'll solve your problem. Paul O'Byrne said, this is great. And if there was going to be something controversial come here, Paul O'Byrne, smoking his big cigar, would say, this is good stuff. It was, it was designed as a convent, and it wasn't designed for what Fresh Start needed. The problem was, in looking for another place, you had to look for a neighborhood. Oh, yeah, Abbeydale. There was so many great memories there. So this building was the building that came after Mindapur. In 2002, Fresh Start relocated from Mindapur to Abbeydale under the guidance of a fellow named Bill Hart. Bill uh, was an amazing man. Now, unfortunately, Bill passed away about a year into operations from cancer. Bill would have wanted Fresh Start to continue, and the board most certainly did as well. At that point, they had some leadership decisions to make. So in Abbeydale, uh, we were having struggles because we didn't think that our current executive director was a great fit, and we were struggling with our finances. And luckily, at that same time, Stacy Peterson was uh, in between positions, so I interviewed him as board chair, and he, we thought he met our needs amazingly well. You know, honestly, sometimes it's hard to find the words to describe the level of gratitude that I have uh, and the honor of being the executive director at Fresh Start Recovery Center. I think the deepest gratitude I have is for this amazing group of dedicated people I get to work with. To watch what they do every single day is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, something you might not know, we serve anywhere between 150 to 200 meals a day to staff, residents and alumni, uh, which comes out to be about 55,000 meals a year. Uh, not many people know that this place is actually kept clean by the clients that live in the building. This is their home um, and, and, and they're expected to help keep this home clean. Well, we have over 120 people on our wait list right now, so during every day of the shift that I'm on, I must get probably 70 to 75 calls a day. And those calls come from moms and dads and sisters, clients, potential clients, and uh, all sorts of family members. We don't want families being stressed over program fees and that it's open and available to all men, no matter where they come from and what their backgrounds are. What many people don't know about Fresh Start Recovery Centre is that we do not discharge to homelessness. When I came to Fresh Start, we had a 28-bed facility and consistently had 74-plus men waiting on the list to get in. The demand was far greater than the supply and we knew we had to do something. At that time, we were just about to co-chair the 10-year plan to end homelessness, the services committee. And we got a phone call. It was Christmas time. And it was the mother, who loved her son very much, told us, take him off the list. He didn't make it. That was all it took to push the board to move, to expand, to where we are today. With a commitment from the board to increase our capacity, we had to build a new facility. We had $10,000 to work with. We had to build a $12.4 million building. In terms of Fresh Start's history, the expansion, the build of the new facility was the largest undertaking in its history. We built a 40,000 square foot, 50 bed facility. Sounds easy. Before that, we had to get city council approval. We needed to develop and sign a good neighbor agreement. It took an awful lot of people, a ton of hours and energy, into putting this all together and making it a reality. One of the most rewarding and satisfying that I had in, in all my years on City Council was the opportunity to meet and work with Fresh Start to ensure that its new building opened and, and that those services are now in place helping people in our community. Fresh Start was in the business. We had worked with them, we trusted them. And so when they stepped up to build this magnificent facility, it was a no-brainer. And we brought on some campaign co-chairs to do the capital fundraising, because we didn't have any money. So we brought on Ken King, we brought on Rick Hansen, we brought on Katrina LeMay Doan. There were some other partners that were helping us all along that continued to help us. The Calgary Homeless Foundation, we had CMHC. We got all these people together and we said, what do we need to do? 
and we set out in the community to raise the funds to build this phenomenal facility. In 2007, Charity Intelligence began recognizing Fresh Start as a four-star agency. Every year since then, they continue to recognize Fresh Start as an agency that uh, is responsible to our donors and delivers our mission. It's only years later, having researched over 700 Canadian charities, including some of Canada's biggest, and having looked at 40 different addiction and recovery programs across Canada, that Fresh Start stands out for the excellence it is. It is truly the highest impact charity in the addiction and recovery sector and it's one of the greatest opportunities for donors to have their dollars make a huge difference. Sam Switzer was listening to the radio, heard about Charity Intelligence, heard about Fresh Start and decided that we were a great charity to invest in. It's a real inspiration to actually go in and see the building and how and the people that are in it and are being helped and just what a lovely facility it is. That's one of the best investment calls I've ever made in my life. In 2014, Fresh Start was named the William H. Donner Award winner for excellence in delivery of social services in Canada. That same year, we were also named the Peter F. Drucker Award winner for consistent excellence in service year after year. We really are a movement. Uh, we take our message outside of these four walls so that more people can understand what addiction is, but more importantly, what is recovery. That's exactly what the advocating is. This is exactly why we do case management. And our experience with them here says that we believe we can work with them and bring them around. I kind of just thought I have this, so I'm going to do it on my own. But yeah, glass turned into a bottle, turned into a nightmare. The more supports that you have, like great community, you need to build that foundation for yourself. Who built this? You built this. We've been able to have programs that we couldn't before. We've had incredible community partners come on board because we're talking about helping somebody emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. We've been able to help each year an additional thousand people through our various programs and services. You know, we have an awesome facility. Rumpel Hall is absolutely incredible. At the end of the day, however, we never forget why we're doing what we do. So I was a functional alcoholic, you know, drinking every day and going crazy, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday kind of thing for, for years. And what ultimately happened was every night that I did that or every day that I did that or every time that I did that, another brick, another brick of shame and hurt and, and pain would land on top of my pile of wreckage. And, and that pile just got that much bigger. I think the drugs changed me. Um, to the point where I would steal, uh, I wouldn't come home. I went from me measures of good success to actually the bottom. And there was a night when I was sitting in my office and just realizing that I, I just didn't know what to do. I knew, even in, even in the insanity of addiction, I knew that the only way I was going to quit was either to die or to be imprisoned. I think the day that I was in contact with Fresh Start because, um, well, I was homeless. Um, I literally only had people in my life that w enabled me to, to keep using drugs. Um, I was homeless, I lost two homes. Um, I was living in Motel Village, uh, which is a very dangerous place to be. I'm an accountant <laughs> living in this dangerous world that I got no business being in. I think the, the biggest thing was I um, had a ton of guilt and shame when I walked through the doors and I think um, like I had said, I, uh, all I saw was, was people that were willing to help, people that wanted to help me. You know, my experience in the past was that um, uh, you, know, you got one crack at it, then they don't want anything to do with you. You know, it took me four times a fresh start to get it. And, um, you know, and they, they, they believed, you know, they believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Fresh Start's given me the gift of knowing that life isn't perfect and life isn't going to be perfect. But I, but I can do the best I can each day. We have the time, the resources, the hope, the love, the people, and the experience to help anyone succeed.
but I have a family and my dad passed this year and uh, um, you know one, one of the biggest gifts is that I was clean when my dad died. The truth is you are a part of everything that we do and we thank you for that. We could not do what we do without you. Hey guys, I just want to welcome Jesse to the house if you want to introduce Jesse, yourself. Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> Mike, how are you doing? This is Johnny and Dustin. I get that connectedness. They're here to support you. I'm just not ready to be on my own yet. And I heard that this is the best place in Canada and this is where I wanted to go. So I was ready and willing to wait as long as I needed to. You get, there's guys that walk in and after two weeks, I mean, I always trust my gut and there's guys that I, you know, in my, in my gut, I'm saying, oh, this, can, this guy's going to be a tough, tough one to get through to. And, you know, my guts tell me he's, his chances aren't good. And yet, 14 weeks later, gratitude. And, and, he, and a year later, he's taking this plaque on the wall. So it's like, yes, I'm wrong again. Love it. <laughs> Having had an addiction previously and gone through it, I think they can offer more than basically someone that just reads it out of a textbook. They want the old Jesse back, but I said, he's not coming back. You can have the new Jesse, so... We celebrate milestones in recovery, so um, we have a birthday meeting the last Wednesday of every month. I don't know, what do we have here so far? Three, four, five, 14, 26, 45, 47, 57 years of recovery being celebrated. 57 years, and that's why we do this. Too many people in our communities across the country are losing their lives to addiction and homelessness and um, this place saves lives. The organization, there's not a bump, there's not a challenge, there's not a wall that we don't step over, crawl over, jump over to ensure an outcome that's beneficial to the residents we serve. Probably for us, the number one benefit is that we get to see less absent fathers, lost sons and daughters. You got to do that. You got to be part of the solution. And we thank you for that. We could not do what we do without you. We absolutely could not. Well, there you have it. 25 years compressed into such a short period of time. And I think the thing we wanted to convey to you the most is how incredibly blessed we have been. We're blessed to have an amazing group of staff, our board of directors, phenomenal donors, and an amazing community to work with. You have been 25 years of Fresh Start. And we suspect it's it's just the tip of the iceberg! Alright everybody, thanks for coming out. Gotta fly.